Ever since I was a kid, I've come in touch with our ancestors' heritage. As soon as I was old enough to travel on my own, my childhood memories drove me to destinations where I could keep on living the charm of the ancients. The more I searched, the more I found a multitude of lesser known but still impressive sites. Then, a few years ago, by complete chance, I discovered that an abundance of little-known ancient marvels lay just around the corner. Italy is certainly famous for a lot of good reasons. Just to name a few, there is excellent food, beautiful beaches, art cities, culture, fashion, and so on. Not many people know, though, that there is a real treasure trove of puzzling buildings and constructions. They sum up in the order of thousands, like the Nuraghi in Sardinia. The great majority of these sites enjoy few visitors for a variety of reasons. They may not be the most impressive, or they simply are not sufficiently promoted. Sometimes, they are still so much a part of modern people's lives that they are appreciated more for their structural services rather than for their historical significance. Whatever the reason, there's still a thick veil over their existence, which in the past decades is slowly being raised. Among these little-known structures are a series of fortified cities in the central part of the Italian peninsula. What makes these sites stand out are their polygonal walls. In this documentary, I will lead you on a journey across different regions of central Italy in the search and discovery of these amazing places. But before we start the adventure, let's quickly answer a few questions. Why are polygonal walls so interesting? Well, just look at them. If you should make a stone wall with chisel and hammer, would you carve the blocks with such shapes? And while having only winches and ropes and no automated labor force, would you choose blocks that weigh tons or sometimes even dozens of tons? But polygonal walls, beside being intriguing for their strangely shaped blocks, are also interesting for another reason. They can be found all over the world. Probably the most famous and precisely carved are found in Peru, but to a lesser extent they are found also in Egypt, Cambodia, Turkey, Japan, Easter Island, and so on. We'll raise this issue again at the end of our exposition. This weird technique seems to have been chosen and appreciated in many different places across the globe. Central Italy gives us the chance to visit, within a few hundred kilometers, many sites that feature polygonal walls. By identifying similarities, common schemes, or even differences, we hope to contribute in shedding some light on this ancient riddle.
we started our journey from the archaeological site of Roselle, near Grosseto in Tuscany. This is actually one of the few sites on our list with entrance ticket and fences. It's considered a true archaeological site. Both Etruscan as well as Roman remains have been found in Roselle. While the ruins attributed to the Etruscans are crude and honestly not really impressive, the Roman ruins include nice walls, some columns and some mosaics. There is even a nicely preserved Roman amphitheatre which delighted our visit. By following the path on the map, we then stumbled on this wall. There's a boulder here, but how big it is! It's massive! The size of the stones was just unbelievable. This is a polygonal wall of the second kind, where the stones are roughly carved to fit with each other and spaces are filled with smaller stones. Nonetheless, the wall is 3 kilometers long, an average of 7 meters high, and the biggest stone is reported to be 2.75 meters by 1.2 meters. This wall definitely deserved to be called Cyclopean. Allegedly, the stones were rolled downhill from quarries further up. The wall is officially attributed to the Etruscans and is supposed to have been built around the 7th century BC. But we couldn't help asking ourselves how was it possible that the people who built this would build this.